think of that. No. I just have a few announcements. I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in with their own. Um, first one is we had our annual board retreat and since it's not numbered year, we had elections. So um, we elected new board members or officials and nothing's changed. I'm still the president, Kathy's vice president, Amber is secretary and Glenn is our treasurer for another two years. Um, next is Alaska Wild. Um, Jer Juror is working on the images and should be done tomorrow night. So announcements will be going out later this week. Um, uh, you'll know as soon as we know. And then the only other thing I have is our March meeting. My, uh, Michael DeYoung is doing a presentation on the Windy app, which is a pretty cool piece of technology. Um, does anybody else have an announcement? Anything or anything they need to bring up? Okay, well, I guess we'll jump in with Jeff Schultz. Great, thanks. So <clears throat> because we're talking about composition, I was just gonna first go through part of the presentation that I give to my photo tour client so you have an understanding of where I'm coming from, and then we'll dive into the actual critiques. Um, but first, here's a disclaimer, and that's that I'm just one guy with one opinion and that opinion happens to be a 61-year-old 60, yeah. male American opinion. So don't take what I say as the gospel. It's just the way I look at photography. Because I, as I tell my clients, if you like your photo, then well, it's I would Don't let me or anybody you. else tell you different. I lost my... And um, so when I owned the Stock Photo Agency Alaska Stock, one of the things my employees mentioned to me was that it would potentially be better uh, to have more than one person review and edit a photographer's work to decide what we actually market because we all come from different backgrounds, you know, male versus female, young versus old, American versus international. So all those things come into play. So that's why I say I'm just one guy here. One thing you might notice though is that I typically tend to dwell on the stuff that I don't think is right rather than on the positive stuff that is good. The exact opposite, the way you want somebody <laughs> probably to talk about your work. But that's the, because that's the way I look at my own work. I look at what is wrong with this? Why isn't this working for me? So don't let that derail you if I come across harsh or something. I'm not as bad as it seems. Um, so as I look at these images also, you'll likely hear me being undecided and maybe even talking out of both sides of my mouth. Uh, because oftentimes I don't know exactly what's gonna work until I do it, until I really looked at it. So oftentimes I'm conflicted with, with what it is that works. So again, it's just my, the way my brain is working on an image. And I'm literally tonight, I'll be talking as my brain is working. So I haven't formed an opinion necessarily. Um, so we'll dive in here. Can every, is everything cool, Margaret, as far as you know? Everybody good? Or is Margaret, Margaret, you okay? You're muted, Margaret. Looks good, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, looks good, Jeff. All right. So here we go. Hopefully this will work when I press. It. Yes, okay. So <clears throat> as it as it said, that photography is art and science, and it's the marriage of the both, marriage of both of those. So the art part is what expresses your vision. And your vision is your vision. This is my favorite, all-time favorite landscape photo that I did. Real simple shot. There's only one problem that I notice with it. Anybody see it? It's in the lower left-hand corner here. Those little things are an absolute bother to me. But in any case, that's my absolute favorite. I like it. A lot of people look at it, they just go, yeah, so whatever. But that's all right. I don't mind. Um, it's what I like. So these are some of my favorite photos. There's only six or seven of them here. I just love this type of photography, a little bit, uh, it's fairly simple photography, but you kind of get an idea of where I'm coming from. You'll notice there's not much sky in my photos unless the sky has something to talk about like this one. Love stuff in the foreground. Obviously wildlife's great. 
people would argue that I should Photoshop out all of the power lines on power line pass. It's probably a good idea if I'm gonna sell it as a print. And then that's my all time favorite Iditarod photo, of course, which is on the cover of my book, Chasing Dogs. So um, the three aspects to great photography, in my opinion, is good composition, proper focus and sharp image and proper exposure. All we're gonna talk about tonight, of course, is good composition. So composition, the art of photography. And to me, that makes or breaks a photo. It's 90% of, of the photo is the composition. And I contend that just about everything is some type of leading line or it has weight is what I call it. Um, and it's either properly leading me, that line or that weight is leading me or the viewer in and around, or it's taking me out of the photo, which is absolutely what I don't want uh, to have happen. So I contend images that are left out of the image are just as important as images that are left in. And this is what my friend Dan Bailey told me years ago, and that's um, that he considers the edges and especially the corners of an image to be sacred ground. I'm constantly looking at the corners and edges of my images to make sure there's nothing in there that's gonna um, hurt the photo. So with a photo like this, even though it's an inanimate object, I need to give it room to move. So there's plenty of room in front of this object to move. With this image, I've got a leading line that's just leading right into the photo. Starts out really wide, goes narrow. Pretty good. This photo is similar in that way. It's got a really good base here of all these crevasses and then the Connect Glacier winding up. Or in this particular case, I would contend that, as we know, typically your eye goes to the brightest part of the frame, so that your eyes comes up here, and then this S curve brings me down into the photo here. Where there's a lot of pretty neat stuff going on in Jeff? the. Crevasse. I'm going to pause delay between your screen popping up and your talking. Okay, thank you. I'll give it a second. So with this photo here, there's a lot of nice dark stuff that has weight and leads me into the frame like that. So I'm about to press go for the next image. How long does it take for it to pop up? If it squares, it's up now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is what yeah, we didn't, all... didn't take long. Okay, we've all learned this is the, the rule of thirds. And you know, this this was not invented, but it was thought about, you know, way back in the 1800s with some painter in uh, Britain, I think. But in any case, it's the it's not a rule, it's made to be broken, but you know the idea is to keep typically keep your center of attention somewhere um, around where these lines intersect. Horizon's not dead center, but somewhere here. So this is a slide that I show to my clients and I ask them, which photo do you like better? And it's important to know why you like one photo better than the other. Are we doing okay here, Margaret? Yes. Okay. So it, I typically have six people in my class and when someone looks at, when my class looks at this, typically there's one or two people that like one and three or four that like another. So with this photo, <clears throat> um, I would contend that this is a bother. It, this, this grabs my attention, that which is the upper right-hand side of the top photo. Um, I'd also contend that this stick is also a bother. That's something I could have easily moved myself if I wanted to. So for my money, the bottom photo is slightly better than the top photo. Same, this is the same location down at Portage Explorer Glacier, um, shot in the spring, shot you know, a couple minutes apart. Again, with my six clients at this, there'd be half that like the top one better and half that like the bottom one better. Not that there's any right or wrong to either one. But again, it's, it's so that I, I put these up so that my clients will look at it and understand what they like about the photo so they can articulate that. One of my uh, big things in composition is separation. 
And I, especially when I owned Alaska stock, this was really important. I told my photographers, if the photo looks good small, it's gonna look good big. And so if you were to look at this photo on the left small, you might get confused with her head being dark and being right uh, in front of that dark iceberg versus moving myself just a couple feet to the right, now there's separation. So to me, that is a really big deal. And then, like I mentioned, I'm all about not having much sky. Unless the sky has something really cool to say, I don't really need to see much. And again, that's just me. That's, that's just the way I look at it. So I would contend that this photo, just by literally tilting the camera down, gives me so much more to look at and has my eye wandering around the frame in these lupin. But if the sky is exciting, well, by golly, let's make it all about the sky. Now, in this particular photo, I took it a little bit further and I used, I think, a 15-stop ND filter and I made a four-minute exposure just because I wanted that little painterly look to the, to the clouds. That's where the kind of the science comes into it, which is not, we're not gonna talk a lot about that today, but that's where I want my photo to look just 10% just or 1% better than the other guys. It's another thing <clears throat> I used to tell my photographers at Alaska Stock, if your photo is just 1% better than the next guy, you get 100% of the sale. So somehow making it different is a big deal. So I, had, I went down to the main photo, not main, the um, Santa Fe photo workshops a few years ago and had my photos critiqued by the instructor. And he said, Jeff, I like most of your work. The only problem is you don't put much sky in your pictures. <laughs> and I said, well, that's all right. That's just the way I am. So even with this photo, some people would contend I'm a little too close and maybe I am, I don't know. And then the one thing I'd like to suggest to people is Sometimes you just can't get there from here. You can't get the greatest composition because there's a bunch of crud in the foreground or not the best sky up above. So I contend that you absolutely never need to keep with the same aspect ratio as your camera. So just cropping the, cam the image that much makes such a big difference. And even with the cameras this day and age, it's no big deal to crop a panorama out of a, a full frame image. Okay, so I put this photo in here so that you can see exactly how bad a photographer I can be. So I would contend that there's way too much sky up here. I would contend that the, the subject is dead center, extremely bad. I would say there's no room for the plane to move to the right. I would say that the prop is coming out of the back of his neck here, which is not so good. Um, his fly line, if he were to cast it, would probably cast out of it. All these things are bad, in my opinion. This rock on the lower left-hand corner, it's not only bright, and it's drawing my attention, uh, lower left-hand corner, um, it's bright and drawing my attention, but um, it's right on the uh, edge, which, again, it's just a bother. It's sacred ground, so it neither needs to all be in or all be out, one of the two. Likewise, with this dark area on the lower right-hand side, um, just too big, too much weight to it. So it draws my attention away from the subject. And then finally, there's no separation. This plane is, I don't know if this is a lake, a pond, a river, what is this? It just, it melds too much, especially the kind of the horizon of the back of the <clears throat> shoreline here runs right into the airplane here. Just doesn't look good. So what do you do? In my case, I just moved, I got a totally different perspective. Now this is my, this is a Jeff Schultz photo, meaning it's a small person in the big landscape. I love that kind of stuff. So there's plenty of room now for the plane to move. There's nothing on the edges and corners that are distracting in my opinion. I, I wish I would have moved the subject a little more to the left so that that prop isn't just coming right out of his belly right there. But there's plenty of room for the plane to move and plenty of room for the fly line to cast and there's good separation. There's hardly any sky. I think it, this type of photo works. 
Some of you have probably seen this photo before, Sleeping Lady, it's always a good seller. But this rock, I obviously couldn't move and it's right on the corner. There's a whole bunch of really weighty stuff here that's keeping me, uh, that's drawing my attention. Even though it's dark, it has so much weight, it draws my attention. So what do I do? The first thing I did is I just Photoshopped out that rock. I know I cheated, but, and then just a simple cropping makes it that much better. It's not a great photo. I don't think it's gonna win any contests because there's still a lot of heavy weight here, but it makes that photo just that much better. And I contend that, um, I mean, I, I'm cropping my photos all the time um, when I'm back in the, in the office here. So that's that. Uh, it's kind of weird doing a Zoom meeting when I can't see here or know what's going on, but everybody doing okay, Margaret? Yes. Um, right. Jeff? Yes. Can I just apologize to the people that sent me images and I accidentally put my name on them? Yes, you may. I apologize if, if my signature is on the bottom of them when I sent them over to Jeff through Lightroom, I forgot to take my copyright off of them. So it's the only time you'll ever see your name on it. And I just wanted to apologize. We just didn't have time to fix that little error that I made, so. I know one thing I noticed with Lightroom, I was exporting from, from Lightroom. It didn't look like there was any way to remove the copyright. Um, you, I couldn't save the export the images with no metadata associated. It's gonna associate at least the copyright part of it, it looks like. Unless somebody knows a special trick that I don't, but I couldn't find any way to export them. Yeah, and that's fine. It, for me, as long as it wasn't in the the title or on the image, it works yeah. for me. I didn't look, I didn't even look at whose photos was whose. So thanks for that. You, you, can, you can always use the Windows Explorer to uh, properties thing to edit any metadata on the picture. That's scary. <laughs> so I don't know whose photos these are. I honestly don't. So I, I hope you don't get your feelers hurt. Um, I, I appreciate good criticism from somebody. So um, uh, I can almost find something wrong with every photo, including my own. So, um, and again, it's just, it's not wrong. It's just my take on it. So don't go there. Um, but one thing I want to mention to everybody is, and, this, and I tell myself this too, there's just no excuses. I'm looking at these photos for what they are. So it would do no good for you to tell me or me to tell myself, well, I couldn't move to the left or I couldn't back up. Well, because there's just, there's no excuses. I have plenty of excuses on why an image is not better or things didn't work out in my own work. But there's honestly no point in me having an excuse. Either the photo works or it doesn't, or it doesn't quite work. So um, it's good for us to at least, uh, for me to say, well, I couldn't back up, this is the best I could do, that's okay. But it still doesn't change the fact that I didn't make as good a photo as I could have. So if you do, if you do wanna talk, I'm gonna critique the image. And before I go on, if you made this image or if you wanna say something about it, you're welcome to. Um, but I'll give you another story. I was invited to uh, show my, I did a rod photography at a famous New York photographer's studio back in the mid 80s. His name's Jay Mizell and Howard Schatz. And uh, these are two huge people in the industry. And <clears throat> they uh, invited me to show my work mostly because, just because I happened to be coming to New York for Photo East uh, deal and because I was the Iditarod and they never heard of the Iditarod. Anyway, they said, Jeff, you're welcome to show your work, but there's one rule we have. And that is you cannot talk about your own work. If we have a question, we'll ask it. We don't want a photographer up there talking about, you know, F stops and I couldn't move left and this is this or this is that. We just want to look at good photography. So I took that lesson to heart that um, it's just easier for the photo to, to tell its own story. So, all right, here we go. Any questions before I rant and rave? No, we're good over here on the chat. All right. Great. So this image, I love the composition. Um, I don't have any problems with the photo other than the only thing that I wish was different was that the guy was not looking to the right and that he was looking to the left. Because he's looking to the right, I want to go to the right right away. 
And, and it's not bad, it's not terrible, but I think if he looked to the left, it might be easier for me then to look to the left and then come back around to the right. Here I pretty much go over to the right and because there's a lot of dark stuff here, I almost want to go out of the frame. But it's, it's very well done. I don't think I could have uh, done much to this at all and, and changed it at all. So if I did anything different, I would probably crop it slightly like this, just getting him just slightly. It's not a big deal. You can see the crop mark there, right? It's not a big deal. But I would get him, if he was looking to the left, it, this would really work well. And I'm looking to the right, it doesn't work quite so well. Sound okay? Moving on. All right. So this photo, I love this pink aspect of this photo. It's beautiful. Um, the, the, the problem I have with it is that I love this, the hoarfrost on the lake, as well as this frost covered um, grass, but it's cut off halfway. There's a lot of, of weight to this. I wanna see more of this, but but then there's this rock that to me is, is good and bad. It's good in the way that it's there, but it's leaning to the left. So my eye wants to go this way. And as soon as my eye goes this way, I now look at this and then I'm done. I'm out of the frame because there's not enough of this. <clears throat> I, it, I believe it could have been better if the photographer literally moved to the left and put more of this in it. Maybe they couldn't because it was thin ice. I don't know. Um, but because there's so much going on here, but this takes me away, my eye really doesn't come back up here. I think the, the way, it's, a, it's such a beautiful image. Another thing about this shot too is though, this small uh, peak over here, uh, because this one's so big and commanding, when I come down here and look at this peak, this one wants to take me out of the frame again because it's on a downhill slant. There's just something about this area that's taking me out of the frame there. Um, I, it's such a beautiful photo. I probably would do something like this, even though it, it's almost sacrilegious to crop that stuff out of the bottom. But that to me is a, a more pleasing photo because my eye doesn't leave the frame. Versus this one, there's, it, there's just so much going on down here, but this takes me out of the frame. And that just makes it that much harder to stay with the photo. There's tension between the top part and the bottom part. It's about the best way I can explain it. That sound fair or unfair? Okay. <laughs> Great shot. Love this. Um, but, uh, but I would make it, I think we could make it better because of this out of focus stuff back here. I think this is just a real simple fix because it's all about the hippopotamus. I don't give a darn if there's anything back there because it's out of focus. So I would literally, oops, let me, uh, I'll keep it to the same aspect ratio here. And literally, bleh, literally it's just a matter of cropping in, making it all about the hippo. Because that other stuff is just plain distracting. So I need to give it a little bit of room because it's about the head resting on this other hippo. So to me, somewhere in there makes that much better of a photo. Does that make sense? Somebody nod, yeah, sure it does. Okay. All right. This image, love this. Um, I really like, especially the, the way the photographer made the clouds stand out. Oftentimes people blow the clouds out. Um, so I like it all. I could almost like it just like it is, except for this part over here. There's, there's not much weight over here on the left side. So I'm, I'm coming down into the frame just fine. When I get over here though, th these rocks here help me climb up this, this hill here and the grass is neat. I love these, but, but now my eyes almost stuck here and it's stuck wanting to roll out of the frame to the right. So as much as I love this, 
I think the photo would be better. I'm gonna not make it the same aspect ratio. I, I never mind. Pretend I didn't say that. And I think the photo. I don't know yet because I haven't cropped these. But I think the photo would be slightly better like this without those trees, even though they are so cool of trees. I think that's now gonna allow my eyes to go um, back and around. I don't know, sometimes I fight with myself and that's just the way it is. Perhaps if I crop this one just slightly, maybe that'll be better. Because now, now, now that I left them in, but I cropped just a little bit out, now they kind of uh, balance with these other ones over here. So I would say that is probably slightly better than that, in my opinion. Question, answer, ragbone? I, I actually like the, um, the tighter crop better myself without the trees in it. Without the trees? Yeah, yeah I, but that's, that's just my opinion. Right, the personal preference. I actually, now that I cropped it like this, I like this better um, because they, they kind of balance. But in any case, that's what I think. Great job, whoever did that. This image, there's only two things that I would consider. I think it's brilliant. It's great just the way it is. Um, if I were to do anything, I would love to Photoshop out these silly power lines. That's a bummer. But whether you like to do that or not, that's your own preference. As an, For an artistic photo print, I don't mind uh, Photoshopping that stuff out. Um, if it was for an editorial shot, I wouldn't. But I would probably try, if I could, to get just a little bit lower which would put this person's silhouette, her head right up here, therefore getting a little more sky, which would therefore not make the horizon right in the center. To me, that's the only thing that's bothering me. And it only bothers me a little bit. It's not a big deal. Because it's such a powerful image, I love this. It's great placement of the person. And I love that, just that little bit, that <clears throat> the way you can see between her thumb and her index finger on her right hand, that's huge to me. The fact you can see daylight there, you can see the edge of the phone. If that were moved just a couple inches to the right where you couldn't see the edge of the phone, it would be a bump. It'd be a real bump. So those are the little things. That photo would look good small, and then it would look good. It obviously looks good big, too. Anybody? OK. All right, so this photo, um, I would contend that it just needs cropping. To me, the cute picture here is right here. I don't need to see the rump, and I, and if anything, I could see just need to see a little bit of this um, left-hand part here. It, it's almost as if you have three separate pictures. You have the right-hand side to the right of this tree. You have the moose head right here, and then you have these trees over here. So I would contend that because there's, this is such a large area on the right, it's, it's totally distracting. So I would say, I'll keep it the same aspect ratio, I think. I would, no, what did I do wrong? No, that's the same aspect ratio. It's a weird aspect ratio. So I'm gonna, do away with that. What about a vertical? Vertical would be all right too, but <clears throat> I would probably say it's a little bit harder without the aspect ratio. I would say something like this is going to be better because that that's that's the picture. It's all about the moose. Sorry, obviously it's a low resolution deal. Um, I would say that's better. This bright part here, I would tone down. Um, if this were my crop, I would tone it down a little bit. One thing I would do is just add some dehaze to this photo, try to rich enrich it up a little bit. 
um, just a bit blown out. Maybe this is cropped quite a bit from the original, that'd be my guess, I don't know. Uh, well, let's put it into a two by three aspect ratio. And you could do vertical, it wouldn't hurt it either. But something like this, I think is just gonna make it that much better. Just depends on how tight you can crop that and get away with it, depending on how much information you have. Sound fair? Or not? <laughs> this, picture. this one came across and I just went, wow. This is unusual, this is cool. Um, I don't know that I do, I, I like it the way it is. Um, the more I looked at it, I thought the only issue with this is I think I would want to back out, which I can't do here live because I don't have any more image. But it almost looks as if this is like a, a mounted head on the wall in somebody's office. Um, but I would, I would probably back out just a little bit. I think it's fantastic just the way it is. I mean, I just love all this, the, the way it's kind of like he's just popping his head out through the brush looks pretty cool. It'd be nice to see if we couldn't, you know, darken the highlights a little bit anyway to get a little bit of uh, information back there. But pretty darn nice. Okie dokie. All right. This is one of those prints I wish I had on my wall. Um, I, I, I find there's only one thing that I would, well, two things that I would change in it. Anybody figure that out yet? Edges and corners are sacred. So I would literally Photoshop out this iceberg and this. It's, this color blue is just spectacular. Photographer did a great job uh, separating the, the blue from the, from the trees and the clouds in the back. But this, because it's brighter, it draws my attention to it. And really this, the attention just needs to be here. I think, I mean, I'm going to do a quick and dirty deal here. And I think that's huge. I think that is huge. Just that little bit of difference, to me, that makes all the difference in the world. Some people would contend, well, no, I like that little iceberg because it shows me that there's smaller icebergs than the big one. That's just an argument we can have. It's no big deal. But I, I really like, I think that's a, a better image, a stronger image, I should say. Beautiful, very well done. Well, I can tell everybody's excited about this. <laughs> we just forget to take our mutes off. <laughs> okay. So when I was at Alaska Stock, I was looking for this photo, whoever did this one. I mean, this is fantastic. Um, I, 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 don't, I can't fault any of it. If, if I wanted to make it absolutely perfect, I would probably add a little more sky in this particular case for a couple of reasons. One, because we're really close to that edge and um, it'd make a good masthead for a magazine. Um, but I, I think it's brilliant. Um, if you wanted a little more impact, you could probably crop it just a little. Oh, it's another Kathy Hart photo. Mm -hmm. um, you could probably crop it in like that so it has more impact. I know <clears throat> Outdoor Life magazine would crop it like this for their cover, um, just because it's all about the fish. So I would say that this information down here isn't all that necessary um, for, in, for high impact. That, that does great. Beautiful image. I mean, and very, uh, that's a saleable photo in my opinion. I like the crop. It really makes the fish kind of come to life, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it help, I think it helps it out a little bit. Jeff, I have a quick question sure. from the perspective of a stock agency. Would you rather see that shot arrive loose like that so that an editor can work with it? Or do you want to see the photographer cropping in tighter? That's a really good question. Um, I, um, for, in, uh, for
from the stock agency standpoint, I'd rather have it loose like this. Um, if it was in my portfolio or something, I'd want to show it like that. So yeah, from a stock agency's point, you're better off having it loose, giving the art director that kind of option. No. Yeah. Thank Good you. Question. Good question. All right, this is one of those shots I saw small and I just went, wow, this is gonna look great big. I, I, I see nothing wrong with this. The only aspect I would say is I'm a little, you're a little too close here because this branch here is the same as this branch here. We do have more up here. If, unless there's some reason to crop this tight, I would loosen this up here and give me about the same amount that you have, the same amount of dead space <clears throat> between the top of this branch and the top of the frame and put it down here. That's about the only thing I would change. This one tree back here thing does bother me. I know it could be, it would be a better image if that or more impactful image or something if we were to clone or crop that, or not crop out, but uh, Photoshop out that thing. Um, because it does, it does have a bother, especially because these branches are moving to the left. My eye is going to the left. And in reality, this edge should take me around. But because this branch is going left, it leads me into this branch. And then this branch wants to take me out. <clears throat> but to me, that's a minor thing. I think, try it. Whoever photo this is, try that once and see if it doesn't make a more impactful photo. And then if you can, loosen this up down here. But beautiful image. Questions? Whoops. OK. Our foxy loxy friend here. Whoops. OK. So I'm, I'm thinking from a, a photo editor of a magazine, and they're doing a story about a fox. Um, because this is the type of photo, in my opinion, that, that would need a story behind it. The fox is on the prowl looking for an animal or something. Because with the fox walking away, it doesn't really conjure up, you know, some you know, this, this great image of this fox. You don't, I don't see its eyes. It's on the hunt. So um, I say all that to say that it could be more impactful if, if I were to crop this photo slightly, and to me, it only works as kind of a supplementary photo to a story about Fox. Um, so to me, the background there, because it's out of focus, I've got light and dark, that they, they're fighting with each other. So I would say to somehow crop that down a little bit, and I'd also bring this in just a little bit more. Because really, he needs room. He needs a lot of room. In, in reality, if, if there was more to the frame, I would have wanted to see more over here so that I know he's going somewhere. There's not really enough room for him to walk a lot farther down this path, even though you know he's probably heading in this direction. So I mean, good picture of a fox is nice, but there's just not a lot to the photo because it's his rear end going the other direction. I hope I'm not too critical there. But there you go. All right. This photo is, is great as far as, I, I love the composition of this turning fish here. And I love, you know, obviously all the fish are going in the same direction, which is normal. Um, from a science point of view, I wish the photographer would have used a polarizer filter in order to knock these uh, reflections out so you could see into the water better. I think it would make a much better photo. We'll try some dehaze there and just you know, blast the heck out of it and bring our highlights way the heck down. Still doesn't help us out much. So I think the photo is good the way it is. I think just like with the um, jumping trout. I think if we cropped in slightly, so we made it all about this little guy, it might, might be slightly better. And again, a polarizer to knock that reflection down, I think would be huge. So I still want to put that fish probably somewhere in here where he's 
coming around. This fish also is a, because he's closer to the surface and his dorsal fin is out and his tail, he's, he's part of this deal here too. So I think something like this, I'm not looking at the entire photo exactly, but I think something like that helps even more. But because there are a lot of things going on here. So I think narrowing in would help it just a little bit. Sure would like to look into that a little bit more <clears throat> into the water. Okie dokie. Okay, moving right along. All right, this image, um, I think it's got, I love the fact that it's all about the leaves right here. The only issue that I see is because this leaf comes into this stick, I think it would be fairly easy to move this stick, push it out of the way, bend it. I oftentimes bend plants out of the way, clamp them, and then unclamp it when I'm done photographing. This one looks like it's dead, so it might even you know, fall off or something. That would make it a lot, lot better. This, this branch just distracts me way too much because it's all about this plant. So there. Now this photo, I looked at this briefly beforehand and I'm going, what do I do here? Because this is beautiful, this upper left-hand stuff. I love the mountain up there, but it's so bright and it's in the corner and there's blue sky and white clouds. I, once I'm up here, I never go back down. I, I, the, the, the sailboat helps me with its mast look up and then over, and then I'm gone. I'm just stuck in here because there's so, so much cool stuff. So I would really hate to crop this and, and crop that out because it's so pretty up there. But if it's about the sailboat, I don't think I have a choice. If it's about sailing and we're um, or boating, I mean, this is sacrilegious if you ask me. No, that's not a very good crop. But if it's about sailing, that's the picture, unfortunately, in my opinion. I'm only one guy, don't crucify me. Uh, because if it were my sailboat and I was sailing in Alaska, I'd love to have this picture on my wall because it shows, you know, Alaska mountains or wherever. So <clears throat> anyway, that's just my take on it. I'm not sure what else we could do. I haven't played with any of these photos as far as cropping because I like to do it live. Perhaps we could go to a square photo. That makes it better, I think. I think without all that dead space on the right-hand side, oops, without yeah. all that way dead space there, I think that helps the photo a lot, keeping the mountains in there. So you can tell I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. I yeah. like the square crop better too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes the photo. Now, now because there's less room over here, my the mass brings me up, brings me around. And actually this stuff, this the folds of the mountain there, and this little jetty here, this ridge brings me back into the frame. So I think that works much better. This image, I, 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 I love that this is the decisive moment, I think, with the bear with his paws just right. Um, but I believe because this is dark up here and then the light grass, I've got, I've got too many things going on fighting for my attention. This stuff up here really fights for it, as cool as it is. Um, so I would say that this photo is going to be better as a horizontal. I'm actually going to, I think it's going to be better. Love the reflection, but I don't, I don't believe I need the grasses up above. So I think I could crop it like that would be one way. A little tight probably a little too tight because it, 
doesn't show. I'm just going to play with this a little bit. So I like the green of the reflection. If I get, I'm just playing here, so pretend. I think that's better. I think it's that dark stuff up above that, that I'm having a problem with. That it, it's, it, it has, that dark stuff has weight to it. So I think that helps a little bit. I'll try one more here. I don't know, you get somebody else in my shoes, put Carl Johnson in here or somebody else and they'll say something completely different and that's all right with me. That's your cue, Carl, to say something. I like that. I like having a little bit of the green in there because I think it tells the story of what the beaches look like. Yeah. So that's that's kind of my brain thinking there as I'm cropping. So hopefully you got a taste of what I go through when I'm trying to figure out what to do. So I think well, that's a better bet. Go ahead. Since I was invited, this is Carl. Um, <laughs> I, I like not having green on both because when we want to talk about what the emphasis of the reflection is, it's the bear. And having the reflection of both the bear and the grass kind of takes the balance away from the bear. So I like how you have it cropped now with showing the green on top, but not showing the green in the reflection. So the reflection is all about the bear. Yeah, there you go. And it's interesting. I mean, I hope you guys saw my thought process there. I mean, I played with it and I had to fight my own self in order to find what the right thing was. And sometimes it's hard to articulate, but hopefully it got the, pic got the picture <laughs> of uh, what I was thinking. So yeah, good for us, Carl. We agree. I like it. Okay, another Kathy Hart picture. This is really hers, I think. Um, so I, I don't think I'd change anything here. If anything, there might be just a little too much on the left-hand side because he's looking so far to the right. If I were to crop in off this side, it might help it a little bit. And you could argue whether the horizon or the uh, water should be level or not. It's a river, so it's likely not level. Um, you could you know, level the thing out if you wanted to. You can make him look really boss by doing something like that. <laughs> but I think that uh, just that little bit, I do think helps crop it out. Because just a couple of these, just that little black thing right there is a little bit of a bother. So just cropping that off. It doesn't need much, if anything. All right. This one I believe was cropped in a lot because it's quite uh, fuzzy. So to me, the, the, this is a great action shot. Um, I would say that the photo is right here. It's, it's the ptarmigan, that's it. I mean, there's nothing else. Everything's out of focus. Love the snow falling, that's great. But dead center just kills me. So this, because the, the ptarmigan's moving, I, my eye wants to move. My eye's gonna go in this direction, even though there's nothing there and it's out of focus. So I contend everything back here is useless. Just like a pilot would tell you the most useless part of the runway is what's behind you. So you always wanna use all of your runway. Anybody ever hear that before? Now's the time for someone to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> there's the photo right there. That makes, as much as I like, I mean, I will tell you that I love this dark stuff because it shows, um, uh, because there's, it shows the snow, the snow shows up better. I like that, but it just doesn't help the photo at all in this case. So if that were a sharp image, to me, that's the photo, lower right hand there. Very simple. <clears throat> Everybody nodding off already? No, I agree with you. I think that people just remember to take, need to take their mutes off if they want to say something, and and this is your opportunity. So, very good. So this photo, 
So here's what I see in this picture. This rock kills me. It, it's bright and it, and it takes my eye. It's even leaning, not leaning, but it, it slants right here to the left. So my eye wants to go out. <clears throat> so the tree is beautiful. I look up and I look down at these branches and this branch now, because this is bright, my eye goes to it. You could darken it down a little bit and um, and that might help if we just, you know, give it a whole bunch of darkness here somehow. Quick and dirty way to do it. That might help. <clears throat> I don't really want to crop it because I don't want to lose these branches. If I had control over this model, I would probably move him a little bit to the left. That way he's looking more into the frame. And I believe if the model were over here a little more to the left, he, there would be enough of a distance of space between the model and the tree that that would help me keep my eye in that direction, which is it's just, it's just kind of the way it would work out, I think. So cropping isn't gonna help me in this particular case, I don't think. But I love the image, there's a lot to it. So, so you think that just darkening that that rock may may work? Yeah, or I think I need to just pick a bed and move him. <laughs> yeah, the other option would be literally for you to move to the right when you're taking the picture and get it out of the frame. Then you may or may not have that kind of time. So, if I try to crop it there a little bit, that right. helps. That actually yeah. helps a little bit, I think. Even though it's still cut in half, I think it does help. But um, maybe I just Photoshop it out. Yeah, Photoshop it out. That's always a good idea. Um, but yeah, so that's what my take on that one. Okay. We're getting close to the end here. I don't see it. I like this picture. The, I don't see much wrong with it. Um, I, I would contend that this dead thing here, it either needs to be all in or all out. I, I like the fact that there's not a lot of sky up here. Um, love this area. I think it's along the Denali Highway or some such. I believe I would say the horizon appears crooked to me. So I would want to straighten that. But I love, this is one of those that you might not, you may not have been able to get there from here. I think if I could have gotten on top, you know, this is why I carry a ladder during Iditarod. If I could have gotten up a little bit higher to get above this, because I really like this base layer of water down there at the bottom. Um, so I don't know that I would want to crop in a lot. But as my brain's working here, I'm thinking if we did something like this to get rid of that, and I see, as soon as I get rid of that, I also get rid of this water and I really don't want to do that. It, it's really not a good thing, I don't think. So I'm just playing here. Yeah, see, see, I love having this stuff right here centered in the frame with this coming down, and this coming down. So, but now I've got a tree over here I'm fighting with on the right-hand side. I can't crop in too much lest I lose too much of a good thing. This is one of those times where, you know, Mother Nature just, she has her own way of making things work or not. Yeah, see, I don't like that. I mean, I think it's good, but I don't like it because now I'm chopping these things off, these uh, willows here whatever they are. I kind of need to have those because chopping them off a little bit is not so good. So there's a couple things you could do here. You could um, vignette the photo. I'm just going to do a quick and dirty thing here. You could vignette so that this bottom part down here is super dark, um, which, will, which would take my eyes what happened? Anybody know what happened? I lost my mouse. 
Oh, I hate when that happens. Well, I hit, oh, there we go. That was weird. Anyway, I can't really do a good job of it here, but you might, you could consider vignetting it, which would just vignetting, making the, the bottom side, I wouldn't vignette the whole thing, but making the bottom a lot darker. Um, I'll use a different tool here. This is just a quick and dirty. I obviously I wouldn't make it that harsh and I do some things to pretty it up, but that actually, if that were um, feathered in, I think that could help you out a little bit. Something's weird with my computer. Better quit while I'm ahead. But anyway, so it, it's a beautiful scene. <laughs> I, the only thing I think I could that I would want to do if I were there shooting it is get up <laughs> and then shoot down. Um, so that I avoid this little thing here. Great image, and I'd also be sure to straighten the horizon. There. I, I, I think this is good the way it is, except for this stuff back here. Similar to what, um, uh, like the bear photo and a couple others, that right there, it looks to me like that's the edge of the the lake and to me it the the it's a heron right uh, yes bird the heron and this is just so beautiful this stuff is not the same texture as the water so literally let's just come down a little bit crop the top off a little bit and i think that's going to make all the difference in the world you can also see where the um tree trunk there met the edge of the pond or lake. I think that that's beautiful. Just that little bit, I think, helps a lot. Um, Jeff, does, does the green on the left side, that's really bright, do you find that distracting at all? Yeah. Yeah, you could tone that down. It is distracting, yes, is the answer to the question. So if I wanted to make it even more cool, I think. Now my heron is really in the upper right-hand third, which I think is good, but I lose the reflection of him, right? So you could do that, but then you could also make a square out of it or something similar. Cropping is definitely your queen. I think that makes for a stronger photo. Whoa. Yeah, I think that's all right. Anybody besides Kathy want to say anything? No. <laughs> Come on, you're killing me here. All right, we'll keep on going. People, somebody say something besides me. I don't want to make Jeff feel bad. OK, hey, Jeff. It's Georgia. <laughs> Georgia Bennett. Did I just murder your photo? Uh, no, but back back on the ice, you know, the ice um, yep. iceberg that you liked, yep. where it was all clouds at the top. Did you think that should should there were clouds have been cropped some, or is it okay to have them just all like the top third of the picture be heavy duty clouds? Sorry, I waited so long. I just <laughs> <laughs> that one, yeah. Where is it? I'm not. Oh, kind of. Um, Where'd it go? Oh, okay. here. Back up. In the middle, right next to the guy. Yeah. Yeah. That one. No, I, I, you could, you could crop off some of the clouds. It wouldn't hurt it any. There are a lot of clouds up there. Um, There's a poor title. And then, and, and by doing so, it's a good idea. It's not a bad idea. I would keep this dark stuff there. Uh-huh. Because, yeah. because of that. Whoops. No. Um, I probably cropped in the sides a little too much. 
Yeah. <laughs> My Lightroom is funky tonight. You gotta go up to the corners, I think. No, I shouldn't. Not when it's kind of like that. Yeah, I, I really I like the idea of this dark cloud with the light cloud. Okay. Yeah. I think it could go either direction on that. Okay. Well, it's, a, it's a perfect space for a title up there too. It, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Title doesn't would work. All right, we're getting close to the end. Well, maybe we're not. Okay, bald eagle. So, um, un unfortunately to me, the, the eagle is looking this direction. So <clears throat> this over here is just completely dead space. So <clears throat> it's to me, it's it's useless real estate. So beautiful image. Now let's just make it all about the eagle. Because that's what it is, and what depending on how tight you could crop this as tight or as loose as you want, but the idea here is making it about the eagle. I mean, that's the portrait of the eagle, and then you could also make it more of a about its environment by giving it a little bit of room. Oops, sorry. Yeah, that's nice. But. We can't, we can't give it too much on the left because he's looking so hard to the right. But yeah, that works. Yeah. All right. I don't think I'd change much here. If anything, um, if you could have, it looks like this photo was cropped in a little bit. So if you could have get, gotten the whole reflection of the eagle, that would help. And because he's flying at this down, he's flying, he may be going straight across, but it looks like he's coming at a slightly downward angle. I would say cropping a little bit off the top would be very helpful. And then ideally having more of his reflection in there. That just helps a lot because it's all about the eagle. You don't really need this stuff up above it. All right. This image is stunning, but this kills me on the left-hand side. It just, it, it's, it's cut, cut in. Love the photo. In my opinion, we just, and, and this is one of those where it breaks the rules. The, the subject is dead center and that's okay. And I would argue that you could crop this where it's not dead center and it is dead center and it would still work. But I would say we need to do this. <laughs> Just that little bit is going to be helpful in some way, shape, or form. And this is the artistic thing, whether you want to crop a little bit off the top, a little bit off the bottom, that's up to you. But I think that is, is going to be a little more um, pleasing and a quicker read. That it's all about the tree. Because over here, I look at the tree and then I immediately look to the left because there's something poking in at me. But it's beautiful. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So you could do a lot with this photo. This would make a, a great square image as well. Again, by cropping out that right hand side. This is one of those photos that you're just, you could be here and get five or six different photos out of it. Crop it like that. Crop it like that. Probably want a little more sky to it than that. Again, though, I'm just one guy and that's just what I think is a good time. So there you go. I love the simplicity of that photo. Yeah. Absolutely great. All right, this is um, beautiful Denali Dawn, as usual. The, the, the problem I have, the good thing is it's a great photo. <laughs> love the color, love everything about it. The problem I have with it is that it's dead center. And because of all this white snow here, 
my eye wants to go down here as well. So I'm kind of fighting whether do I look here? Or do I look here? What's going on? So you could darken all this down by um, using whatever tool you want to darken the snow. You could crop. This looks like it's been cropped a bit to begin with. Um, but if we just came up off the bottom a little bit, yeah. I think that helps a lot. But this, uh, in my opinion, this photo does need something. It needs something in the foreground. It's it's just kind of a normal Come on. snapshot, for lack of a better word. Come on. Somebody want to say something? Anybody? No. But it's it's beautiful. That I think that this helps it a little bit. Um, in my opinion, you get what you pay for here. Okay. So another Kathy Hart photo. Who do you know? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, I don't know that I could improve this. I, I don't know that I, this is one of those that I know I would love it when I shot it. Then I get it back and I go, is there really a photo here or not? There's a lot of cool stuff in here. So I like it. But I don't know if it, if it would make it on my wall or not. If I were to give it any critique, I would just say that these little bits of rock that show up here, there's probably, there's probably no way around this, but I would probably, I would try if I could add more of it or get less of it. This maybe is the best that could be done. Because they're right on the edge, they are a little bit of a distraction. Um, but, but it's one of those that I'm just not sure makes it as a, photo that I'd want to put on my wall. If anything, if I wanted to crop it at all, I might come down like this. That's so pretty. Yeah, I like that. Something like that. Because it by itself, it does kind of fight with itself. Is this the main subject on the left or is this the main subject on the right? I mean, in my opinion, you kind of have to have one of them is the one you really want to look at. And so I think Jeff, uh, this is Carl, before you move on to the next one, for me, the subject I really wanted to see more of is that texture on the frozen pond or lake or whatever it is, all those different waves of snow and ice and all that. I would love to have seen more foreground in this one. I right. Think. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Now, who knows what was really there? Maybe it was a bunch of crap. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> um, I concur. It's it. It would have been, could have been better to see more of it for sure. But it looks good. They did, a, I like the job they did with the sky here where it's not blown out. Worst thing in the world is white sky. All right, moving on here. Is this really a Kathy Hart photo? I don't know. We're not going to say anything. Okay. No. <laughs> I, I would contend that there's two photos going on here. You've got th this, this ridge is 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 like dividing the photo to me the picture in my opinion is is right in here it's it's if i wanted to crop it like this i mean i should say if i wanted the entire scene i wanted to see the water and everything then i would want to move the camera move it way to the right so that i i would crop like right in here somewhere all the way down now there may have been a bunch of crud over here i don't know but this is so much weight. This is what I talk about when I'm saying weight. This is black, it's dark, it draws my attention. And, and so it fights, I'm fighting, which side do I look at? This is so big and so dark, and, and this is a little less big, but it's brighter. So my eye wants to go to the brighter part. So <clears throat> if, I, if I wanted to keep it like this, I just move the camera to the right. Just literally swing it. If I want to, um, I use the word save for lack of a better word. If I wanted to make it about this photo, then I'd probably start coming in and doing something like this, where the bright part takes up the majority of the frame. That's cool. And then whether I want to do a vertical or not,
you know, you could do something like that, which may or may not be good. I think actually making it, I, I like the clouds in this shot. So you could do something like that. You can make it a real killer vertical. That might be interesting. Mm -hmm. But but because this ridge has the brightness on it, I, I just I can't have too much of that dark on the left hand side. I'm not doing a very good job of, of sorry for whoever photo this is. I'm using the word save, but uh, you get what you pay for, like I say. That's way too cropped in. But so I, I would say the way to make this photo the the better photo would literally be to swing the photo to the right. Because the the with the, everything you have down here, I think looks great. But because it's so dark over here, I'm not I'm not seeing it all. I just need to see a little bit of this left side. <clears throat> Did I confuse everybody thinking through my brain? No, I, I agree with you on that. Um, George is laughing at me. That's all right. I know. <laughs> all right. I get that way. OK. Oh, that's nice. I like yeah, that. I don't see anything wrong with this image. Um, wow. I love it. Uh, if anything, I would probably want to swing a little to the right if I could. I'd want to see a little more of this tree, maybe. I don't know till I see it because the moon's starting to get a little bit in the center here. It'd be nice if the moon were like right over here, I think. But I like it just the way it is. I mean, I could nitpick it and say this little bit of snow here is a bother, but just like my photo that I like, it's got something. But lovely time of night. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to say anything about that? Whose shot is that? Anybody want to fess up to it? That's mine. Very good, Mr. Quinn. Good job. That's nice. Very good. Sunrise at Cooper. No, I thought it was around Cooper. All right. So this image, um, this is one of those uh, Christmas postcard things. I, 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 don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The only thing that I would try to change, if you could, are, is I want to include more of these rocks on the bottom these four rocks. And rocks are one of the hardest challenges because they oftentimes never line up just right. So I would try my best to get more in it, more of the rocks in it so that there's only one that's cut in half. I've got three, almost four. These three big ones on the bottom are cut to where they're a bother. So just zooming out a little bit. And one thing that I'd recommend to a lot of people now, especially with the image sensors we have is is go wide and crop later, <laughs> right? Go wide, crop later, and that way you've got something to play with in Lightroom, especially if the light's changing and all that. Shoot like a madman and deal with it later. And plus, so you I, oftentimes get more depth of field that way, too. The wider your uh, focal length, the more depth of field you get. So if you're I've, using... Yeah, I've, go ahead. I have a question for you. So this, this is my picture. Um, <laughs> If um, if if this is as wide as my my lens that I had with me would go, so would it be better to go down and lose a little bit of this sunburst in the in the top left corner, or like Photoshop these out or something? No, you wouldn't want to lose the sunburst. That makes the photo. Scoot okay. them up a little. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just take, if you took this one out on the lower right, you'd probably be pretty good and maybe take this one out. Okay. Not as bad. But that was just a couple of days ago in Russian Jack Park. The, the light has been spectacular in there, if anybody's interested to know that. So what you, so the, the key to this would be to have a photo vest on and have your 16 to 35 in it as well. Oh, yep, there we could do that. Uh, wait, I don't have a 16 to 35, but maybe I need to buy one. Go on to my gear list and uh, purchase one that way. <laughs> All right. Kathy, um, were you, would you have been able to get closer to and lower down to the ground to those rocks? Because that, 
compressing that distance would allow you to get, I think, those rocks and the sunburst better. Yeah, I might I might have been able to do that. I, I would have to I would have to check. It's one of those days where it was, you know, five below zero and I just um, was out walking my dog and went, oh, I have to take a picture of this. It's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I, I'd like to go back and try it again. Bob Martin also suggests you could take two pictures and stitch them together. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. There's more than one way to do photography these days anyway. All right, this photo, I can't, I can't get better. I think it's brilliant. It's great. Fantastic. If anything, I would probably take a little bit off the left-hand side as a crop, just because there's a little bit of dead space. I wouldn't say it's much at all. So if you came in like that, it might help a little bit. Yeah, it helps. In my opinion, it helps. But it's a great shot. Perfect leading lines. All this stuff is leading down and in. It's just great. This one. Wow, I've been, I fought with this. I first saw this a few days ago and I looked at it and said, I don't know what to do. Because here's, as the way I see it, this gal is looking to the right, right? So, and her body's almost, it's kind of leaning, the way it's leaning is to the right or down with her squat there. But yet her rope and her ice axes and the waterfall is going up this direction to the upper left. This stuff is beautiful. I don't want to lose it. Um, and have the second ice climber in the background. I almost wish that this ice climber wasn't there. And then this would be just fantastic just by cropping in a little bit. Um, I'm just talking a lot of different things here. This big dark thing here is a bother. It's, it's grabbing my attention a little too much. So, I don't know what to do with this picture because there's so much action going on into the upper left. I, if I were to crop in on it, I would just, I would make it worse, I think. Because there's room to breathe over here on the right, I don't have that tension. Um, if, I were to, if I were to crop in, I'd have too much tension, I think. Let's just try it. Try it, you'll like it. I mean, it, it's really a, it's really sad that I'm losing all that stuff on the right because it's yeah. so beautiful. No, well, it actually does help it a little bit, I think. Huh. And I, th I think if you brought it in from the left a little, just to get rid of the brown stuff, but but kept the height, um, and left the, yeah, and, pull this down yes. and then bring this in. Of course, you can't see where my hands are, but uh, yeah, if you brought it in, <laughs> in on the left, <laughs> yes, <laughs> in on the left, yeah, and but the full height, then you get right. I got full height, right? No, no, I pull the bottom down. So change the aspect ratio so it you can get the full height. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant crop the this left hand brand. Oh, I get you like this. this? So I'm making it a vertical. Yeah, make it a vertical. Yeah, well, yeah, that for, yeah. And then pull it, then pull it, pull it in so you're blocking off those, yeah. So I'm blocking off this stuff down here? Yeah. Yeah, pull it over to the other side so she's still. But you don't want to pull her this way, do you? To me, that. Yeah. Should, right? Mm -hmm. that was... No, he you lose her rope in the. The stuff yep. around a rope to the upper yeah. left. That's why this is a quandary. I mean, maybe yeah, stop right there, but yeah. but drop it down at the bottom. Right. Maybe that's it. Pretty cool. George is going to give this class next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now she's can't help it. <laughs> but there is there, this is a great. This is one of those. That's things, an awesome shot. You know, sometimes you just can't get there from here. Because whoever shot this is probably on a rope and can't move an inch without falling down or something. Anyway, it's beautiful. This is a time where you want a model that you can control and you have a radio and you tell her just what to do. <laughs> <laughs>
because that that's the key to you know good stock retirement. Actually, Jeff, luck, luckily I wasn't on a rope. It was a uh, it's it's a road that goes right by the the ice climbers. Oh, so this is your fault then. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> good job, man. <laughs> yeah, I like to see you struggling with it though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> anyway, there's, there's there's a lot going on there. This would have made a great photo even without the climbers. I mean, it's yeah. The issue that gives me challenge with this image is there's an almost perfect vertical line of dark on the right and light on the left that separates the female climber from the other climber. Yeah, which is a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> but maybe I didn't understand. Say that again, Scott. I, I I struggle with how to balance the the light on the left oh. of the vertical line with the right the the darker on the right. Yeah. Well, fortunately, he has, he has I think he has enough detail in there that it doesn't make it too dark and too bad. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Lynn, we're going to have to leave this one alone because we can't figure it out. All right. Thanks. Good <laughs> job. All right. Um, I don't think I can do much to improve this other than take this person's name out of the picture. Um, <laughs> I think I would have wanted Sorry. more in it. I think because this is an S curve going in, I think having a little more weight on the bottom may have helped, may not have. Um, but also by widening out a little bit, hopefully getting a little more of this creek on the bottom also would give me a little more of the edge here. If I could get that edge, it would help me um, stay within, you know, stay within the bounds. I kind of, when I come over here on the left-hand side, I almost want to run out because the water's running out. Right there. Um, but overall, it's pretty good. I think um, who's ever shot this was, whether it's Cappy's or not, they did probably crop it this way because there were issues with the photo. And they did the best they could. All right. This one, I, at the first time I saw this, I thought, this is great. And I said, well, how can I pick it apart? Well, I don't think <laughs> I could. Other than if I had control over these models, I might want to have them over here, walk in this direction. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of weight over here with this dark stuff. Um, but I like it just the way this would make a great, you know, double page spread in a travel magazine about. Mm -hmm. So love the separation between the two. And the fact that his head is not in the shadow, just that little bit of separation makes a lot of difference. Kathy's been all over the world. It seems like. <laughs> like I said, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I feel embarrassed here. Oh, look, there I am again. Woo! <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. This is one of those dichotomies where there's so much cool stuff in the sky. I want the sky, but this is so cool. I want it to be about this. Wow. So if, if, I, if, I, if I were standing here and this were my scene, I would try my best to see if I could get lower and to the left so that I could look up and see a little more sky, but at the same time, not so low that this line here of this above the blue ice would block the mountain here. Because then this having this dark line of trees is great separation. So I don't think I could have gotten very low. So I, I I think this photo fights itself because the, the horizon is in the middle. That's why I want to do something. I want to either point the camera down and eliminate the sky or point the camera up and get more sky and maybe widen it out. Maybe all it needs is <clears throat> whatever focal length this is, is just to widen it out and get more of the sky and more of everything, if that's possible. Um, if I were to come off the sky at all, this is such a pain in the neck. Um, everybody's going to hate me. So I don't mind. You know, because now this to me, 
makes a better photo compositionally. Compositionally, yeah. I think this is a lot better because it's not dead center. It's just like more that. pleasing to the eye. There's not much sky, even though the sky is cool. I think by eliminating it, I helped it out. It really shows the, the height of the ice more, I think. Um, I, I don't and, and it, it's such a simple, I mean, it's, there's nothing to it, right? Taking a little bit off the sky. That's what it's all about. See, the problem with this is, is my, the sky is so bright, my eye is up here running around and around, and it's, it, it needs to be everywhere. My eye needs to look everywhere. I get passionate about this stuff. Anyway, uh, <laughs> not even my photo, but I wish it was. Nice shot. I think this is the shot compared to that. My eye works around the photo better. All right. This one, I, I don't think, it, I love it. I think it's it's brilliant. Um, I don't think That's I'd cool. do anything different on this. That's very cool. Anybody have a comment? Georgia? Nice. <laughs> I love it. Margaret? That's that's really cool. All right. Okay. This shot I, is fantastic. I, this to me is magazine quality editorial photo about whatever they're doing, whether they're <laughs> biologists looking at you know tree frogs or whatever it is. But if but and so compositionally, I think I don't think I do anything different, maybe a little more sky in this case, maybe come off the right-hand side just a little bit, maybe. But honestly, I don't think you have to do much at all. But what I would do, if I have control of these models, I would say stand still longer and I'd make a longer exposure so that I could see more of this water and hopefully wow. that water is moving and I could see a little bit more of this. So I played with this. I mean, this ends up looking totally crappy, but if, don't look at the people here, but look at the background. If I could see that little bit more, that these people were still a little bit dark, um, I think that would be the key to this photo. I don't think you can do it in post-processing without ruining it. You can't bring up the shadows enough without getting a lot of noise, I don't think. But a longer exposure to get to see that, I think, would help the photo a lot. How about separating the two people on the right? Say that again. You're, get close to your mic or take your hand off separating your mic. Separating the two people on the right? Say it again. Separation of the people? Oh, yeah. You could argue, yes. If you could absolutely nitpick and say if this girl were moved down here or just have the guy take a step to his right or left, Having that separation would be better. Yes, good point. Good point. Yeah, that was about a 10 second exposure as it was. Yeah, but remember, no excuses. Right. <laughs> oh, I have uh, ISO, or I don't know what you would do, but I wasn't there, but um, it's very well done. I like it. I have a question. Um, to get the, the lights the way they are, is that like F16 or um, that you get the star tracers? Not necessarily. Um, in this case, I doubt it was F-16, right? Whose shot was this? Alan's yeah, shot? this is Bart Quimby. Yeah, I don't remember what the F-stop was. Is that going to my computer? So. Uh, but it, I'm sure it was an F-16 because he doesn't have that much light. right? Yeah. Yeah, but, but it was a time exposure, so I, I might have been up there. But anyway, I just did one of these on a photo shoot recently, and I got a starburst at F-4 or 5.6. It's oh. just the type of light, I think it was. It's just, and I don't know, I'm not smart enough to know what it was, but I think it's the type of LED light in there or some such that makes it do that. Okay. Very well done. Thanks. Very well done. All right. Beautiful time of day. I love this time of day. Looks like up the Glen Highway, maybe. But in any case, the, the thing that, that gets me here is we're, we're, we've got way too much going out of the frame. Now, 
if if I had my druthers, I'd either take a chainsaw and whack that <laughs> off, or I'd move to the right. I love I love this foreground. I'd want to see more of it. I think this is probably one of those cases where you just can't get there from here. I've been there because there's trees in the way. But widening this out, perhaps moving to the right a little bit so you could see this edge, and hopefully this edge too, probably not enough. Maybe you'd have to do a horizontal. I don't know. But in any case, what, what, what hurts the photo is running into this edge. It, it, it should be an S curve, but it ends up being like a, I don't know what it is, an S with the far left side whacked off. Because it, it has all the makings of a great image by uh, serpentining up into the mountain. It's fantastic. But that one thing just doesn't do it. So I'd, I'd have to see the whole scene, maybe just crop wider. I don't know. Anybody want to fess up and tell me what the deal was here? No. Okay. Yeah, this bark would be again. And um, I think that I was trying to miss the tree. I couldn't get over any farther to the right. So beautiful shot. I mean, beautiful opportunity here. I yeah. Think um, a horizontal may have been a better bet if you could have done that. I don't know. But anyway, right, right. I've been there. I know what you mean, Bart. Okay. This one. This one is kind of like that Auk Lake winter shot. I love these snow-capped mountains back here, but all the action is headed this direction. Um, this, To me, this is an editorial photo talking about pack rafting or biking in the mountains. But because there's so much action going from starting with the guy going to the left, that's where the photo is. So all this stuff behind him, as cool as it is, just doesn't work. Um, you'd have to get upstream from the guy a little bit so he's coming at you more and then have this. <clears throat> and maybe you can't do that because it's too deep it, it was a split second, whatever. I don't know. But you've got two photos going on here. You've got a landscape picture on the right-hand side, and you've got this action shot on the left. So this is one of those, like, lens I don't know what to do with. Because, I, I mean, in my opinion, if you're going to crop it, this is the shot. I mean, if, if I was a photo editor at a magazine and I'm saying we're in the Alaska mountains and you know here's where he's struggling I might do something like this because that shows Alaska a little bit and it shows him struggling but depending on what other shots I had to work with that were wide angle I might just come down here and say this is a river crossing just like that because that's what this is <clears throat> the only other thing I might consider is perhaps doing a panorama. You know, you don't need much. I love the snow-capped mountains back there. So if you did that and gave him some room to run, so I, I want to keep that uh, little thing there. Because I have all that, I don't necessarily need the top of that mountain. So depending on what my layout was, I might do something like that. But now I'm dead center. So it's a struggle. Um, this is one where it really, in my opinion, that you really need to um, get that the third rule going because he's dead center here. Get him way far off to the right. Uh, moving into the frame. And the only way to do that is literally to walk over off to the right and shoot downstream more. Anybody? Maybe you could just tell him to turn around and go the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> then you could keep the mountains and, and just put him farther to the left side. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is taking longer than I think we all thought, isn't it? I'll try to move quicker. Um, so this one, I would just lose some of the sky. 
I don't need any more sky. I love, I mean, it's brilliant the way it is, but I would say to be more impactful, just like that glacier ice we shot a little bit ago. I don't know, you could crop the trees off on this left-hand side. I think either way works for this particular photo. I think that makes it a, just a much more pleasing photo, in my opinion. Yes. Same way with this is, is to me, the, this is all dead space up here. The action is happening right here, right in line with the, with the um, waterfall. So I'd make it all about the waterfall. <clears throat> uh, even though there's some great leaves in here to use, I would probably, oh, this thing is so weird. <laughs> I'd probably come in like that a little bit and make it all about the waterfall. Now I've got a rock here that I'm about to cut in half. Whether I want to or not, I don't know. To me, that helps the photo mm -hmm. because there's just all this stuff that isn't part of the photo. The action is the waterfall. I think that helps. If anything, I would probably add in the rest of the bottom of the frame because that gives it a little more options there. All right, moving right along. I think this is the last one. Um, same thing here. I, I mean, as cool as this is at the Little Sioux and, and these trees look good, I, I, don't, I think my eye stays up here and it's, and it's really about the water. So I would say cropping this. Just cropping down. Now you guys are gonna shoot me for this probably. I would say, I'd say that's better in my opinion. Now, having said that, no. it went up just a little. <laughs> that, I liked some of the trees on the top. Yeah, I like that, but this, just this stuff ends up drawing my attention. So I don't think it's all that, that. Well, but if you have that mountain up there, it brings your eye, you, you see it, but then it brings your eye down into the trees and into the water. So something like this or a little higher? A little higher, I'd, I'd have the whole mountain there. And you want the trees? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there yeah. you go. Yeah, uh, it, one thing I would it do- It draws your eye and you come in, and then you come back across and- Yeah. It's not my shot. <laughs> I just like the mountain. I, I, to me, the, the water's too blue. I would pick a neutral color here and, and, um, and then change my color temperature a little bit. Mm. But that's just me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It, to me, this is just too of a, it's a great image, but I've seen it before and I want something different. So it's a little too plain, but it's beautiful. I mean, I shouldn't say plain. She, he did a great job making the water as silky as it is and it's gorgeous. So, and a lot of depth of field, everything's sharp, love it. So there you go. All right, so I think we are officially done. So I hope I didn't bore you too much. Is anybody left in the theater here? <laughs> everybody. <laughs> No, no. We have, still here. <clears throat> we have 35 people here, Jeff. And thank oh. you so much for taking the time to do this. Yeah. Yeah, I got a lot out of it, actually. It was actually, very helpful. Actually, thank you. Be surprised. You we weren't expecting to get much, were you, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just seeing a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of thank yous um, and everybody that sent in their photos. It was very helpful to hear all the different take, takes on the different things. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots of great ideas. Thanks for the tips. Okay. <laughs> well, if you, if anybody, I'll do a plug since I'm here. If you can go to my website, schultzphoto.com under resources, there's something called critique. You can have a private critique done like this where I'll, you can, it's 79 bucks for a half hour and we can go through a lot of stuff. You can buy 50, 
by an hour, whatever. So there you go. But um, if you don't want to do that, I hope you learned something. So that's great. Well, yeah, I learned a lot. It, and I, again, apologize for, um, you know, just putting my name on everybody's photos. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how you pulled that off, Gabby. It happens. <laughs> Makes you just that more conscious that every time you send something out that you need to look at all of the little squares in the bottom that says, do you want your copyright on here? <laughs> you make sure that's I've, I've had to redo a few exports because I either didn't have something I wanted on it or I had something I didn't want on it. So, yeah. But um, well, well, we, we know which pictures Kathy liked. Those are the ones she put her name on. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, it's a great meeting. Margaret, do you have anything you want to add um, to tonight's meeting? Do we have, um, I guess this is sort of member slides tonight, right, we, Alan? We did have a few, but uh, being as late as it is, I think I'll hold off till next month on those. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. And thank all, you, Jeff. We're, we're pushing uh, close to nine o'clock here already, so. Yeah, sorry I took so long. I honestly didn't no, that's, expect this to be an hour. And so that's, that's okay. Everybody stuck Jeff, around, think, so I don't think anybody was yeah, time well spent. I think spent, everybody Jeff. liked everybody got a lot out of it, Jeff. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Like I, I really like how you took the time to crop images because it sure made a difference. Yeah. Um and Steve James says, not too long. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate so, that. Yeah, thumbs up to you, um, Jeff. You've done it again, and yeah, very good. All right, we'll do it again sometime. Thanks for playing, everybody. Have a good night. All, All right. right, you too, good Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night, everybody. Bye. All right. Bye to everybody.